class is now in session. Oh, hey! Welcome back to the Citanium Mine. So in 2023, I played a whole bunch of games, and one of the things that I tried playing were some free student projects. You know, ones that you can actually just find on Steam. They're uh, available to download in their entirety. You pay zero dollars for them. And I'm actually very happy that there are so many student projects out there because they're fun to play, right? You get to see these folks that are at these, you know, digital art schools that put together a, a game and try it out and show you the cool stuff that they do. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's neat to see what they're trying to put together. And I wanted to talk about them, but I didn't really want to put them into a numbered list uh, because I, I felt like that wasn't fair. You know, there's a difference between products that are put out for sale uh, by an actual company, even if it's a small indie studio, and then student projects where they're just they're just putting it out there to show people what they're working on. And, uh, hey, is this cool? Maybe get a little bit of feedback. I thought I would give them the feedback. So we're going to talk about them here. We got four on this list. So let's talk about them. And I'm actually going to talk about them from my the ones I like the most to the ones that I didn't like and uh, the reasons why. So, first one, Viking Hiking. One, really fun to say. Also, really neat to play. The idea is basically that you are indeed a Viking, and you are hiking, and you need to collect all of like these glowing orby things. And it's, it's a basically platforming, but with some really interesting traversal mechanics uh, throughout the entire game. It also has a really nice art style to it. I, I appreciated that. And I could definitely see something like this being a more full-fledged out uh, game, uh, especially when you get to, you know, figure out how to time different jumps so that you go over spike traps and stuff like that, um, and time it for, like, water spout platforms that come up. Uh, there's definitely qualities about it that are basically just, like, a platformer, uh, you know, floating platforms that go up where you have to, like, bounce between them. Uh, in time with the platforms rising up. They do a lot of that in this game, and it works. It, it, like, works really well and feels very satisfying when you're playing it. It is, of course, just the one level area, and then you go through the gates and the game's over. So it's not, like, a full-fledged game. None of these really are full games or anything, nor are they trying to be. But uh, I thought the mechanics were very nice, and the landscape was very nice, and that it was uh, very, very entertaining to play this uh, fun little and sometimes very challenging platformer game that they made with Viking hiking. Andara Rise for Rebellion is a game that is part platformer and then part, like, uh, action shooter. And it gets you into these arenas where you have these enemies that come at you, and you have to figure out how to to shoot them and dodge them and everything like that, and then also some traversal puzzles that you go through uh, to get from one area to the next, and it's actually all built pretty well. Uh, it is a fairly linear framework as to the way that you're going through the game, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you get to shoot some big baddies, and there is this sense throughout the entirety of the game, which is notably very short, it's like an hour, hour and a half, where it feels like you've just come out of it by the skin of your teeth. You've, you've, just, you've just avoided dying um, before, uh, before your last enemy falls. Very, very good tension there, and I, I appreciated that. It is a little rudimentary, and it does start to get a little static in terms of the gameplay, but... Uh, I appreciated that it felt like it was actually trying to be a real game. Like, they, they knew that this was a student project. They knew that it wasn't a full game, but that they were aiming to present it as such. And I appreciate that. Mostly because there are some games, like On Guard, which I talked about as, like, up in the top ten for uh, this year's Best to Worst, that originally started out as, like, a student project. And then they made it into an actual game. So if they wanted to do that with Andara, I think that they have uh, enough of a framework here in how they present the world uh, with these these various elements of like platforming, but then also uh, shooting mechanics and doing this quick aiming for targets while you're on the platforming challenges. 
that they could that they could flesh that out if they really wanted to, or use those mechanics in a game that they actually do make. Invicta, the next queen, is trying to be more of a uh, top-down version of like a, a Souls game, where you do have some sneaking mechanics and you have, you know, uh, some combat mechanics, and it has a strong sense of style to it. The only thing that really challenges me uh, is that there is a point where it feels like I can't actually complete whatever the game is because you'll go into a new area and then if I back out of the area or I get to the end of the area, it loops back to the first area that I did and there's like nothing new there. Like you'll you'll get a chest and and oh here's the key and then I unlock the place where the key goes and there's like a, a battle there and that's that's neat. And then you'll get to the end of there and it just loops you back to where you were before. So I I, I guess the problem with it is it doesn't feel like it's a complete concept that they put together. And I, I don't mean to be super critical of the game. Uh, because I, I think overall it feels pretty good. Uh, like, I, I, I think it has a, a nice style to it, and it plays pretty well, but it did feel very confusing at, at the end, and in another stylistic thing, if they're listening to this, another stylistic thing is when I go back to those areas, I don't need the script to give me the story again. I'm not even talking when I died or anything like that, but literally when you move from one screen to another, the dialogue happens again every time I, while I'm trying to figure this out. it's We don't have to do that. I, I heard it the first time. We're good. The Archipelago Promise is um, probably a game they don't have to keep working on. Um, it's got a little bit of that style of, like, uh, I'm gonna be a survivor on this island, this, this mysterious island, and there's, you know, bunnies to catch and everything like that. It's not greatly implemented. Uh, one of the first tasks that you have to do after you get off of the boat is you have to, you know, get a bunch of lashings together, and you just have to do it so you can get to a rope. You can, you can make a rope, and there's a few different mechanics you need just to make the rope so that you can get down into a ravine to the next area. Uh, and it does have a lot of the basic survival mechanics you need to remember about your food and you need to worry about your water and, uh, you know, how cold it is and everything like that. You can't go into the water. Um, this is not that kind of a game. It does feel very hemmed in in terms of the landscape. You, it's not like an open world kind of game. And it kind of feels a little bit more like survival elements entered into like your more classic adventure game where you're trying to suss out the mystery of this island when you're going around it. It does have the problems of one feeling like it's very claustrophobic and not really knowing where to go most of the time. Also that the colors blend together so much that when you go and say, oh, oh, I need, I have a rock in my hand and I need to get that bunny rabbit because I need to eat something, the bunnies just blend right into the background. I, you couldn't, you couldn't track them most of the time. It's like, is that a bunny rabbit or is that just a lump of dirt? I mean, I guess good camo for the bunnies, but I, I don't think that that was intentional. Like, you would have to wait for something to just move a little bit to even tell that it's there. And so I feel like that's the kind of thing that maybe this doesn't work. <laughs> maybe this doesn't work. I can see the wheels churning about what, what they were trying to accomplish here of doing like a mystery, but doing it with like survival mechanics. Similar to um, another game that I played that was also a student project called Arid. Arid that came out a couple years ago. But I think Arid did a really great job of it. You know, the, the idea that the sun beats down on you and the, uh, the open world elements just seem more, more open. It, like the game just felt a lot more open. Um, and that you have to be real mindful of getting sunburned and, you know, heat exhaustion, that kind of thing. Um, it's like that, but it's not as well implemented as Arid was. 
Also, just a side note, you should try Arid. It's free on Steam. It was a student game and uh, kind of neat. That's a recommendation at the end. That's that's my recommendation at the end. Arid definitely feels like the kind of thing that could have been fleshed out to an actual like release title game. Trapped in the middle of a desert after a plane crash. There are like these invisible monsters in caves that yet you have to you have to run through you find abandoned cities gets cold and at night you got to make sure not to not to get too cold too you know so yeah those are some student projects that i played and they were you know a mixed bag but what i do appreciate is that we live in this era where students at these institutes can actually share their work with the rest of the world and show people what they're working on it's it's not something that we've really had access to before. Usually the only video games that you would play were ones that were uh, released specifically by companies uh, to to sell them to you. And the fact that we have like these free offerings from uh, some really nice institutes of digital technology that show different student teams that are able to put this stuff together to show what they're working on and uh, possibly beneficial to the students to get feedback is is really great and encouraging. I like to see what they're doing in, in those institutes uh, as passion projects to show what they want to put together and what cool mechanics they can come up with. I will more than happily play a free game that's only like an hour long to see what cool stuff you put into it, if you put anything into it. All right, students, that is all the time that we have for today's class. Please put your pens down. Your assignment today is to read chapters 5 through 20 before tomorrow. That's 300 pages. You should be able to get through that. What? You're... Oh, you're gone. Really? That's going... It's going to affect your final grade. Don't care, life's too short. Yeah, that tracks.